Hello everybody in the chess world. Uh, I'm sh here today to show you the Tory attack, which, um, well, in this case, I'm going to show you it against the, both the King's Indian and the Grunfeld defense. So, well, it's called Torre because of Eugenio Torre, Eugenio Torre, um, which was, uh, I think it's, he was either the one inventing the line or playing it more often. And well, there are a lot of good and bad things as with any opening to say about this. So nowadays I don't play the, the attack, the Tory attack anymore. It's a little um, passive for me, but I actually have a lot of experience. So I can tell you a lot of, I, I walk a, a long way with the Tory with white. So I remember the first time that I played this, it was just preparation for one particular game. So the thing was, I had this opponent where you know, we've been, we had played a lot of games, you know, and a lot of times when I was white and I play my usual C4, this opponent played the Budapest Gambit. So I wanted to pre to avoid that. So cl clearly, Knight F3, it's a way to avoid that. But the thing is, I knew that normally in this line, this opponent played the King's Indian, just as myself. And in those days with white, I was playing either the Samish variation or the Aberback. So both lines are ruined, you know, by knight on f3. So, just, I forgot to tell you, in case you don't know what the Tory attack is, basically we're going to play d4, knight on f3, and play with a bishop outside of, of the pawn chain. So, I prepared that, this Tory attack for that particular game, and I ended up playing it for like two whole years. So basically, I mean, I'm going to show you like, the normal scheme, if we were, were be something like this, knight f3, g5, uh, g6, sorry, bishop on g5, bishop on g7, and knight bd2. So, I mean, I told you that we were going to play this against both King's Indians uh, defense and Grunfeld. Well, of course, I mean, black can just play castles and after, say, e4, d6, so you'll have this story attack at, against the King's Indian, but there is also d5 all the time, for example, right here, this d5. So this is Tory attack against the Grunfeld. So ooh, I'm going to go in order, in, in the same order that I had studied the, the Tory attack. So my first model game was uh, came from a book by Kasparov. I think it's the proof of time, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So this is kind of like a model game in the Tory attack against the, uh, the King's Indian. So I'll just show you briefly the opening and some of the, of the plans. So uh, Kasparov was playing against this guy Martinovich and c3 so I, i'm searching the, this game and, and all lines i realized that well a general plan is to continue with bishop on e2 the queen well just short castles the queen in general goes to c2 but basically then we're going to play a4 and the expansion on the queen side if they let us we're probably going to play before and uh, we're we are going to see this uh, in this particular game mostly because of black played e5 so after e5, if we either play d5 or we take that pawn, then this bishop is not going to be so power of powerful, you know, along the diagonal. That means that we can also play this b4 move. Okay, just <laughs> now I'm just going to show you the moves instead of so many arrows. But it's always good to know the plan because otherwise, you know, as soon as your opponent plays something different, you might get confused. So the game follows knight bd7, bishop on e2. And as I said, e5, I mean, c5 is definitely possible. A lot of uh, players with black rather c5 because they, yeah, they're, they're trying to keep the possibilities of this bishop good, uh, Fianchero bishop being super active. So in the game, after e5, Kasparov took in the center and played castles. b6 by Martinovich. You'll see, again, as I said in, on the intro, the white plays really solid and really tranquil. You know, rook on e1, okay, bishop on b7. As I said, c2 is normally the, the, the destined for, for, you know, our queen. h6, bishop on h4 were included. And after queen on e7, well, bishop on f1. And yeah, it is really solid, but okay, we're opening up the, the file for our e1 rook. It was developed there. Now also the black queen is there. Normal move. And after rook f8, well, we, I saw, we saw this b4 immediately. Again, as I said, this pawn here with these two pawns, I don't think this bishop is going to be too powerful. So, I mean, instead of starting with an a4, which I don't think is a bad move, but, you know, maybe it will be answered by a5 or whatever. 
logical for Kasparov to start with before, because now with any a5, we can just advance that pawn. And okay, the game followed a6, knight c4, and after rook a c8, we saw a4. So I'm just gonna stop the analysis on this first model game here. Here, white is slightly better, and well, is okay, we're gonna have to see what black does, but we have a slight advantage and it's not hard to understand, you know, this opening probably or yeah, h4 bishop is gonna go to g3 and it's all normal. So that's that was my model game. And but then I, I realized that there was a lot of theory around this. So let us go back to initially d4, knight f6, knight f3, g6, bishop, bishop, knight bd2. So g5. So what if um you know, black decides to play the, the small lag, like a Gronfell. So we're gonna play e3. I mean, our plans are gonna be quite similar, but okay, there's gonna be a big difference with this pawn on, on d5. I'll, I'll show you how. So castles is the main move. In case of c5, although I'm sure if you open up the database, you're gonna see a lot of players going for c3. This is totally fine if you, if you wanna play this, totally fine. It's not what I what I play in those days. I I rather play with c4. So normally, if c5, I used to play bishop on e2. I mean, nothing to be afraid of. If c takes d4, we can always take with the e pawn. Then I play. I used to play castles, and then all developed. I lashed out with with c4. Of course, it's a matter of preference, but at the same time, is well, since I'm against a Grunfeld, I'm mainly going to show you lines with c4. So I don't want to confuse you like, oh, if c5 you play c3, if castles you play c4. No, let us be consistent and make things easier for ourselves to memorize lines. And so that, that's the thing. Okay, main line will be castles. And again, I'm, I'm going to recommend c4. Again, you can all also play bishop on e2, as in uh, this was, uh, there was a Kramnik Leko game that followed bishop g4 castles c6 after c4 leko took the knight then after knight takes knight bd7 okay bishop on h4 just probably preempting you know some h6 rook e8 queen c2 knight b6 b3 and rook c8 rook ac1 and okay leko here play knight on e4 kramnik went bishop on d3 uh, i think actually leko here went back back with knight on f6 Understandable. I mean, f5 just looks wrong because we see some holes, you know, like, you know, here and here. But it was also definitely playable. Now, going back again, I'm I just trying to give you some options. I used to play c4 in here. I mean, and then and the thing is, you know, c5 is, is basically um, the most Grunfeld like. So I think, yeah, if, you, if you're facing a Grunfeld player, it's really usual to see c5. Again, they could play c6, as, you know, Leko did. They could play knight bd7, you know, there, there's a, a lot of options. But I'm sure you're going to see a lot of times this c5. And again, I mean, I'm going to recommend taking on c5, on c5 in this line. So just briefly, I want to show you uh, two options for black because I think that, again, if, the most Gronfeld like move you'll see is Queen on a5, which is totally fine. You might also encounter Knight on a6. I will say Knight, in, Knight on a6 is probably slightly better. I mean, I like more of that move. And in that case, you can just develop the Bishop, and when they take it, Castles. Okay, I'll just show you briefly again. Uh, one, and I don't have the names of the players, but this was a real game in which Knight f4 came. So. When you think about the, the Gronfeld instead of the, the King's Indian, since there is a pawn on g5, there is support for a knight on e4. And you always have this bishop on g5. So I know it, everything just that I just say is pretty obvious, but this is one of the big difference, differences, you know, when black plays Gronfeld instead of King's Indian. So, okay, in this game, uh, some chaos came with knight takes e4, knight takes e4, and c takes d5. Now we're gonna see some flashy tactics by both bishop takes on b2 and now well the idea is i mean maybe if rook b1 there is knight on c3 so but the white played bishop on h6 knight c3 came anyway because it's logical they want to blow up our bishop on e2 the game continue queen d2 takes 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 on f8 
well now I'm, now I'm assuming that if if you go back with the bishop will go out with bishop on h6 ah, i don't like that too much for black but okay black actually play king takes and after rook takes queen takes d5 and well i mean e4 came queen on a5 and queen on b2 um i don't know i mean i I think in this case, actually, I am going to open up the, the engine. Well, the engine is saying that the F6 move, which is what was playing in the game, does give an advantage for black. I don't like this position for black. I wouldn't like to be in black's shoes. But okay, I, I can believe the engine. I mean, there is an extra pawn for black. Of course, the development, okay, the destructor is a little weird. And, you know, white's king is safer than black's king. Also... Black has a bishop that is not a bad piece, but definitely the knight on f3 is kind of cool. And white is also up in development. So, okay. Again, I, I do believe this knight on a6, you know, outside of this line, it doesn't matter this particular line, is maybe better than queen on a5. But definitely I think that after d takes d5, just, uh, you'll see more often queen a5, just because it's more a Grunfeld line. And of course, queen on a5 is correct. So my prep in those days was a3. So of course, since we're threatening b4 and we want to play it anywhere against anything, the most logical move for black is to play d takes e4. I mean, this is a move that kind of wanted to do anyway with black. We open up the file and someday maybe we'll play rook d8, ask questions to, to the queen. And of course, now there is no b4 as they will just take on passant. So bishop takes e4 and queen takes e5. And rook c1 is the main line here. Um, here, both queen on a5 and queen on b6 are good moves for black. Um, let us say queen b6. We always play queen c2, knight c6, and b4. White looks slightly better still. And going back, I mean, queen on a5 back. Because this way, well, now if b4, they can take on a3. So, again, I think you, you will see this queen on a5 quite often. Uh, well, just normal castles and after knight c6, well, queen c2, and again, same same ideas now following it up with rook f3-1, which is super natural, you know? Uh, so, this is the other thing about uh, both against the Grunfeld and the King's Indian. Well, I'm a King's Indian player myself. We, we usually, with black, we, we want some, some chaos and tactics and, you know, dynamic possibility so this is the other strength of the tory attack it's kind of like a bummer a little bit for yeah for us king's indian or grownful players so this is the, the other cool thing you'll see in all of these lines that yeah white kind of gets just a slight advantage um and 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 game is maybe a little bit dull i mean even this is what, what i think think about that in this position well obviously what the next move is going to be rook fd1 you know obvious moves rook fd1 h3 so it might be a little bit more boring, and this is one of the reasons why, for which I'm not playing it nowadays. But again, it is psychologically a little bit annoying for the aggressive Kings Indians and Grunfeld players. So let us check more lines, because, ah, yeah, I, I told you that I, that I wanted to, to tell you the, the story, you know, my story with the, with, with the Tory attack. So I played a lot of games, both against Kings Indian and both against, against uh, and against the Grunfeld. So... In one trip that I made to the States, I, I played a, a, a tournament in the Manhattan Chess Club. And I was playing the Tory Attack. In this position, in a tournament game, my opponent played G5 in this position. I actually did not know this at all. And the funny thing is, after that, I played some Blitz games over there, and everyone played this against me. I was like, what, what is this? Like some Manhattan Chess Club thing that they, they, they taught them or so, some American thing maybe they all play like this and and I had to actually I, I had to check a little bit of the theory because the thing is we are not expecting the 5 here I mean as soon as black let us play e4 you know, normally we would expect if they're gonna play Grunfeld to play d5 here after castles and e4 well, now we were just expecting, I was just expecting d6. But d5 is definitely play, definitely playable, and I think it's a pretty good move. Um, and the main idea is that we might think that, well, but now we can just advance the pawn. Well, yes, but knight on e4 
it's actually a, a, a good a good move even the computers are start, starting to like black here and this has a little bit uh, to do with what I said well maybe our, we're gonna have to lose a tempo I mean our, it's not so terrible to lose this night but it is hit so if we have to play bishop on a four here or something it's uh, don't like it so much so actually what I what I saw with the theory is that instead of advancing that pawn well bishop on d3 sustaining the pawn is um, probably a better move and okay now we are ready to play e5 and well it's not so terrible let us say black cool allow us to do that but then this knight will have to go to d d7 or e8 they, they couldn't play wouldn't be able to play knight on e4 so normally what pawn takes knight takes knight takes and bishop takes and c5 is well what these american players were, were all playing against me um and what will you'll see more often i mean black is playing actively and again more grunfeld like trying to make this bishop on g7 really active um this is all definitely playable but you don't have nothing to worry about just play c3 after c takes d4 I will recommend to recapture with the knight. Um, again, it's not a sin to play c takes d4 now, but in this particular position, I don't see a reason to play with the isolated pawn. Um, okay, I will definitely take with the knight. Now, h6 is the main move. Um, you might encounter the move queen and a5, just developing the queen and hitting this bishop. Well, here you can choose. I mean, I will play probably bishop on e3 right now you can play queen d2 as well um maybe you don't want you wouldn't want to because probably first knight c6 but yeah someday rook d8 is gonna come so you might not want to have this yeah queen defending the bishop in the same file where our opponent's rook is gonna come attacking but it is play well me personally i think i will play here just bishop on e3 um h6 is the main move though and bishop on e3 Okay, here's a little funny detail. I mean, knight d7 is main move. There was, according to my database, and I say according to the, my database because I know that there are some fake games in some databases, but according to this database, uh, there was a game uh, where Ponomario was, uh, yeah, Ruslan, uh, Rustam, Rustam, what was, was the name of Ponomario? Rustam, Ruslan? I don't remember. But Ponomario was white playing against Shirov, and this was a Blitz game from 2007, according to this um, uh, database, and Shirov played f5, double question mark, just blundering queen checks, King and Bishop takes b7 and white is winning okay just it's a little detail uh okay I, I don't think a lot of opponents are gonna go f5 in such positions so yeah knight on d7 definitely is a, a better move castles and knight on f6 and bishop on f3 and and in here okay this this is a little bit more of my liking because the bishop on f3 is active and I think that because of that knight d5 is to be played and it's a good move in case of e5 i mean you could play knight on b3 i think knight b5 is probably better why not uh glancing at the d6 square no matter if they exchange queens or not it's a, it's a good thing but i think knight d5 is definitely the best move and well you can just go queen d2 knight takes on e3 Queen takes on e3, yes, black took the, the pair of bishops, but development is still superior for us. We're just going to play rook fe1 and rook 81 Put some pressure on the pawn on, on, on e7. And, well, in a lot of lines, asking black what to do with this bishop. Mostly now that we have this pressure here. Maybe black will play rook b8 first. Um... So again, in general terms, um, as you can see in most of the lines that, that I just show you, we're just aiming for a slight advantage with, with, with white. But I think that there is, well, first, it has to do with preparation. Sometimes you just want to avoid the very, very aggressive, um, well, ways of the Grunfeld and the Kings Indian defense. Again, I play the Kings Indian myself. And sometimes I am slightly annoyed when Black decides to take a really, really solid scheme against that. And, and yeah, actually, also you're trying to 
guarantee you know this at least a small advantage for white so again it's, it's about to be more patient and then think about okay probably if i get an advantage it's going to be in the future and future it's not going to be out of the opening but it is really quite solid and yeah you, you're just trying to get out of troll and i've seen a lot of players uh, having a lot of trouble with the king's indians and, and the grunfeld defense i mean these are two very cool and very aggressive uh, openings so i think again even if it has to do with your preparation or not, I mean, as I said, with knight at n3, for example, you will avoid the Budapest Gambit. It's interesting. Um, I think it's an interesting option that, again, I, I'm, I haven't been playing the, the last years. I, I write other stuff that are more aggressive with, with white, but I have played this for at least two years with some pretty cool results. Uh, it's... It, I remember I, I did not lose a lot of games. Maybe I got some more draws than I wanted, you know, being white. But uh, it's definitely much, much harder to lose a game with this. So if you're searching for something quite solid and maybe you don't want to study, you know, all all the theoretical lines against the Grunfeld and the King's Indian, well, again, if, if one of the ideas is to avoid having to memorize so many lines, I think that the Tory attack is definitely a very cool way to go. So I hope you like the video. I'll ask you to like, comment, share, and subscribe as usual. And I will see you next time.